in today's video we'll be breaking down the current conditions going over the upcoming pattern there's still some more severe weather on the way that we also need to talk about but let's get straight into things and first things first we're taking a look here at our current radar imagery of course and as you can see that major storm is just sitting over the central united states uh, a lot of people were telling me you know in the comments oh it's not a major storm i don't know what you're talking about it's a usual storm uh, and all that stuff but look at this thing i mean it really is a a beast of a storm. I mean, really, really strong storm. And overall, it just looks uh, very intense. You know, even compared to the, the pressure that it has, it looks even stronger than it is, which is pretty crazy. It's in the 990s, it should be currently. Uh, so this is a pretty strong storm to begin with anyway. Uh, we have a storm moving onshore to the northwest as well. So we have our main storm here, obviously, over the central United States. Another storm here over the northwestern United States. And then some scattered about precipitation making its way to the eastern seaboard there that we'll also talk about. But as always, we're going to start out with the northwest. Uh, I always start with the northwest. It's kind of just easy to work our way from west to east in general. Uh, but as you can see, we do have the storminess moving onshore to the Pacific Northwest here. So we see this moving in something like this. And for the lower elevation regions and even the medium elevation areas, I would say this is almost entirely a rainfall event. And very heavy rainfall at that. We see yellows and oranges pretty widespread throughout, especially Oregon and Washington, but at times we've seen that for Northern California as well. Uh, but also we've seen these snowy conditions here for some of the Cascades in here as well uh, in the highest peak elevation regions there. Uh, so that is also worth noting. So that's what we've seen take place here in the Northwest this morning. I expect more of that precipitation throughout the day today. Uh, especially further inland because it looks like things are already kind of clearing up here for the Washington or sorry better yet Oregon coast uh, and that means probably by time we're reaching the next few hours we'll see things clearing up for the Washington coast uh, and then we'll see things move more on shore now here is our beast of a storm and we can we can see where that rotation is taking place somewhere in here uh, absolutely mind-boggling uh, really crazy I mean this looks like a tropical storm honestly, over the Dakotas. So it's just really, really crazy to see. Uh, and this is what's been the main driving force in our severe weather as well. Uh, there is a, a warm front along here. So we see that the air is moving from south to north. That's a pretty good indication of a warm front, typically. I mean, not every single time that's going to be the case, but oftentimes if the wind is coming from the south, things are getting warmer. And if there's precipitation along there, it's safe to say there's probably a frontal boundary in here and sure enough we see that clear as day um and a, a lot of it behind this storm we're seeing colder air move in a lot of colder air move in um to the south of this storm and that's why we have a cold front developing in here as well um so we see the cold air really wrapping around this storm uh and creating kind of a mini cold front there now along this cold front area is where we're seeing most of the severe thunderstorms so we can actually see some of these pretty potent storms down here. Uh, even some severe thunderstorm warnings. I even see a flash flash flood warning there, I think, as well. So we see some severe weather happening in there also. So we have multiple impacts going on right now. We expect more severe weather from this today, tomorrow. Uh, and we're really going to be moving through the severe weather over the next five days at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but up here, we definitely have some flooding concerns in these yellows and oranges. So anywhere in here... I mean, I'm pretty concerned about the, the flooding possibilities in here because we see, first off, widespread rainfall, but not only that, we also see very moderate to heavy rainfall taking place for a long periods of time. So I'm expecting inches and inches of rainfall to potentially occur within that storm. Now, as we head further south, this was also happening the last few days, but we do see some of these isolated thunderstorms heading northward into Florida, Alabama, Mississippi here. So we see these just moving up from the Gulf into here. This isn't something that's too crazy. We see this happen from time to time. Also for Southern Florida, we're seeing storms move across the state just like this uh, from east to west. So there is some sort of tropical flow going on. It's something like this, uh, I would assume, is what we're seeing because we see the storms taking about that motion. Uh, and then for these areas, we see some showers and thunderstorms moving off just like this so don't be surprised if you see some sprinkles if not even some moderate showers especially up here in kentucky west virginia ohio taking place so 
that's definitely worth noting. And then for here, we see these very, very uh, light showers for New England potentially taking place as well. So overall, guys, that is the current conditions. What we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the model guidance. But not only that, we're going to break down our upcoming severe weather as well. A little bit later on, you can always use the sliding bar at the bottom to see the categories and skip to wherever you want to get. Keep that in mind as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at that precipitation type. As we can see, that really major storm here, 991 by the time we're reaching about late morning this morning. So again, very, very strong low pressure system. We also see this up here. So let's just continue on with this. Let's move towards this evening. It's going to be about 8 p.m. We lower, we kind of increase to a 996, which is going to be a little bit of weakening taking place. You can see this precipitation just uh, really spiraling around this storm where the cold air is able to make its way into here, like I mentioned. Um, pretty interesting scenario we're seeming take place here, guys. Um, storminess really builds in for the southeast as well, and this, this starts to lighten up and become more widespread up there. This is by the time we reach tomorrow, Sunday, May 1st. We can tell that there is lighter precipitation associated with that second storm. This storm has uh, gone all the way up to a 1,001 millibar low pressure center, so that's going to be much uh, weaker than it originally was. Some storminess are around associated with the storm still, though. Horseshoeing around here, we see for the Gulf states, even up to the Mid-Atlantic, and then back up through the Great Lakes into the upper Midwest. We see a lot of storminess with the storm going on tomorrow. And then by Monday... It's going to be Monday, May 2nd. We see another low just rapidly building in. We see snowfall up here on the northern end. We see potential severe weather here uh, on the southern end. And it's a 998 millibar low pressure center by the time we're reaching the afternoon of Monday, May 2nd. So that's really interesting as well. Uh, we see this one move up to the northeast. And we see precipitation again for these regions and here. Then by the time we reach about Thursday, we see our next storm building in already. Again, severe weather on the eastern end possible. And then snowfall here on the western end for this one uh, over kind of Colorado and uh, maybe some surrounding regions. That's pretty interesting. And this one does move into the southeast by the time we're reaching about May 7th, May 8th time frame. And, and it does bring some of that precipitation there. And things get really stormy around here uh, for pretty extended periods of the time here. We can reach all the way to May 10th now. And this is the look. It looks a, a bit warmer, I would say, in the eastern United States here. Uh, and overall colder in the West. But we're about to take a look at the temperature pattern in a minute, and we will actually see that. But for now, let's take a look at that total precipitation real quickly. And as you can see, it looks about the same as it had the past two days. A lot of the precipitation still has not arrived, so we're still expecting a lot more on the way over the next 10 days. Uh, if you're anywhere in the grays, it's going to be 0.1 or less inches of rainfall. Uh, your greens are going to be 0.1 to half an inch of rainfall. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch of rainfall. Your yellows are going to be 1 to 2 inches of rainfall. And then your reds are going to be 2 to 5 inches of rainfall. So a quite significant amount of rainfall there over a 10-day period. Uh, and then even those browns and grays there for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa, and maybe some surrounding regions as well. That's where we expect 5 to even 10 inches of rainfall to occur over the next 10 days, which is far above average for basically anywhere in the United States over a 10-day period. So pretty significant uh, forecast here from the European model as far as precipitation in the central United States especially, but not only that, some of the eastern United States as well. Here's the total snowfall over the next 10 days, and I told you guys this would be receding every single day. Basically nothing here for this region, so this is a sign of the spring arriving. Uh, usually this area is first to lose that snowfall, uh, and then we're going to slowly but surely start to see this northwestern corridor here for the Rockies and the Cascades start to lose their snowfall as well. Uh, over the probably by time we're reaching late May, we should see that basically be nothing. Uh, maybe some of the Rockies will have a little bit of snowfall in the forecast for some of June, um, but it's hit or miss whether that happens or not. It, it just depends. But over the next 30 days or so, we should see that really winding down. We'll update you on this every single day um, just until basically there's nothing. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on and we're going to talk about the upcoming temperature pattern. Now, here we are taking a look at this temperature pattern. And for right now, I mean, we have a lot of cold air here bottled up in the northern half of the country. As you can see, a little bit of warmth for the southwest and the south central United States. And this is really going to move its way eastward. As you can see, we do have a lot of this warm air making its way up into the eastern United States here. By the time we're reaching about Saturday into Sunday, here's the high temperatures on Sunday, May 1st. So we see near normal or above normal temperatures making their way into the eastern United States. And then, again, mostly the cold air bottled up in the northwestern United States by this point. 
By the time I reach the high temperatures on Monday, May 2nd, we can tell again that southeastern ridge is really bringing in some of that warmer air, especially for these regions seem to be the warmest in the United States. The coldest seems to be the north central United States. Let's keep moving on with this. By the time I reach Tuesday, May 3rd, again, warmer than normal conditions again for the eastern United States. See cold here, bottled up for the western and central United States. By the time we reach Wednesday, May 4th, we still see the southeast ridge, but it's hardly holding on there. As you can see, a lot of cold air is right behind it as it's trying to move in. By the time we reach Thursday, May 5th, it does start to kind of move in here for these regions. Uh, and I think the most prominent feature here is this positive PNA that we see out here. So this is these warm temperatures here for the uh, west coast here that we see all throughout that region is forcing this cold to head further and further eastward and probably going to force this warm air out a little bit. Uh, so we'll see if that takes place. Uh, by the time we reach Friday, we see this really solidifies itself over here. Mostly the cold air is located in this corridor there by Friday, May 6th. Here's Saturday, May 7th. We see a little bit of cold air here, uh, but maybe this cold air is going to start to intrude on this western United States, which would force this warm air uh, eastward here. Let's continue on with this. Sunday, May 8th, uh, we do see this cold air building in for the northwest, but it just cannot take over the southwest. It's just hanging on for dear life, but this warmth is kind of inching its way eastward here, uh, which is fairly interesting. Let's see, Monday, May 9th. Yeah, look at that. Cold air bottled up in here. And this warm air is really working its way uh, into the eastern United States. And that's kind of where we end the model run. On a cold note for the northwest and a warmer note for the east, not quite super warm. That's why I'm reaching Monday to Tuesday, May 9th through May 10th about. So that's basically the upcoming pattern. Hopefully it's not too confusing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Storm Prediction Center though, because there is still a lot to go over just like the last few days. Now here's the day one categorical outlook. This is for Saturday, April 30th, or better yet, today. And we have our general thunderstorm risk here for the Northwest, and also a very large one here for the Eastern United States. That's where general thunderstorms are expected, but nothing can ever be ruled out, so be sure to heed all those watches, warnings, and advisories, of course. Our darker green region is gonna be our marginal risk, and that's where isolated severe weather is expected at this point for Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and even up in through the Ohio Valley as well. We even have that yellow region in there as well that you can see, and that's going to be our slight risk area. That's where scattered severe weather is expected at this point. For the individual outlooks, here's the damaging wind outlook first off, and this is all based on 25 miles of a given location, but there's a 5% chance there in the green, and then a 15% chance there within the yellow. This is our hail outlook. Nothing changes. 5% in the green, 15% in the yellow. Um, we really don't see any change here uh, with where, where it is or what the shape is like at all. Then the tornado outlook, we have a 2% chance of tornadoes there in the green, and then a 5% chance of tornadoes there within the brown. Uh, super, super interesting. Then day two, we have, first off, a very, a very large general thunderstorm risk there. This is for Sunday, May 1st, by the way. Uh, we see two marginal risk areas, one there for the darker green there in the south central United States, and then one there for kind of the Ohio Valley slash mid-Atlantic region there. Um, so those are the two marginal risks where we expect isolated severe weather. Our yellow region there is again where we expect scattered severe weather. And then the orange region there you see for the Texas Panhandle, that is where we expect a little bit of widespread severe weather to take place. So we're going to want to really pay close attention to that region for sure. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the individual outlooks for day two. We have two 5% chance areas for damaging wind and then a 15% chance there within the yellow of damaging wind. The hail outlook here, we have two 5% chance areas again, and then we have a 15% chance area there in the south central United States, and then we have a 30% chance there in the Florida Panhandle with a hatched area that indicates two inch diameter or larger hail will be possible. For the tornado outlook here, we have a 2% chance there within the green, and then a 5% chance there within the brown of a tornado is taking place on Sunday, May 1st. Now for the extended range, we do have a day three outlook here. Uh, again, first off, general thunderstorms are expected in the lighter green area. Marginal risk is where the darker green area is, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. The yellow area is our, is our slight risk area, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. And then the orange area there for Oklahoma and Kansas is where we expect more widespread severe weather to be possible there on Monday, May 2nd. Now, for day five, we also have another area here. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, we expect at least a slight risk in this yellow area. 15% chance translates directly to a slight risk on the categorical outlook. And then here for, that's going to be for May 4th, by the way. 
for Thursday, May 5th, this is the look kind of similar, but we see a slight risk there for Texas, Oklahoma, and a little bit of Arkansas, Louisiana as well, so it spreads a little bit further eastward. Anyway, that was a whole lot, but for today's confidence tab, we're actually at a five out of six today because I feel like we're moving a lot closer towards a lot of what we've been talking about, so I feel more confident than I did even the last few days. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dove Nagel, Little the Band, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harlan, Michael Kudalas, Catbite, Charles Snit, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I would also to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Van, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.